Hey everyone, well it is sunflower season. I have a new sunflower collection out. My mom has sunflowers growing in her yard and look at these sunfinity flowers. Notice all their leafiness and look at how they have the smaller sunflowers. They're definitely kind of dwarf. We're gonna talk about them as we paint today, but I am painting these really sweet four by six snail mail inserts today and I'm inviting you to paint with me. Just use three colors, basically yellow, some brown, and green. I use a couple of yellows and a couple of greens. This is really my project where I want to encourage you to have fun and to be free and just enjoy the paint dancing together. So let's get going and paint together. Hi everyone, well we are painting sunflowers today, but we are going to paint the Sunfinity hybrid of sunflowers. So these sunflowers, as you saw in the pictures, are smaller. They are growing in my mom's garden. They're a dwarf sunflower and they're a bit more yellow in their color. So this one I had included some gamboge, which we're not gonna include in ours today because it kind of throws off those, that distinguishing look of this um, Sunfinity sunflower. You'll notice too that the leaves are a little bit droopy, which I thought was just really interesting. And there's more leaves on this lot with this particular hybrid of sunflowers. So my goal today is really for you to feel fun and free when painting. And sunflowers are great for this because the colors are yellow, brown, green, all these colors work really well together. It's really hard to ruin it with a, a, mu a muddy mess of getting too much, too many colors on the page. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start with some splattering, just to kind of set a playful tone. We want these to be about, taking about 15 minutes to complete our painting because even though it's summer, I know it's still busy, right? I know there's, it's so nice to have the longer days, but nonetheless, there's still lots going on in the summertime and time to play and create can be limited. So we're gonna do a spend about 15 minutes painting these sunflowers. I am using a four by six pad of paper and this is just the pad I got at Artist Loft or at um, Michael's, their Artist Loft brand, but Hobby Lobby has a brand too. And it's really nice to do these smaller ones. They're gonna fit beautifully in the mail, which I love. So the colors I have uh, going on today, I have yellow ochre, and this is a little bit of a darker yellow. So I'm gonna put that one on first, just so you can see. I'm just gonna actually do some nice splattering around. It's just gonna be a base. We actually want um, a lighter yellow because Sunfinity, they're very yellow yellow, almost like a lemon yellow. But I'm just gonna put a bit of this on at first, and I'm gonna start in my center dabbing on just a little bit and you can see um, that color there and then it's still yellow but it almost has that hay look right of um, like hay growing in the field I'm going to pick up some green I'm going to go ahead and grab hooker's green I'll probably add some sap green too I'm just going to go ahead on this guy and just a little bit below I'm starting with some splatters today just to do something different and moving that down. Now I'm going to go ahead and then pick up um, some yellow again. I'm going to go ahead and just stick with my yellow ochre and I actually am going to go down with my stem and just do a yellow wash at first and then we're going to deepen it up with some green and the green splatters that's kind of fun. We are going to just pull those in there. Isn't that fun? I love doing that pulling in some of those splatters but again just going ahead and starting with a lighter blend of color there. Move over to this stem here with the yellow ochre. Um, again, noticing the leaves, a little bit droopier. This guy is the head of a sunflower that hasn't burst, so we'll paint that in, that'll be all green. And moving, just kind of moving that yellow around, it's blending in with some of the splatters. I love splattering. I think it's fun too when you don't have time to do um, like a whole background, or even you don't even really wanna do a wash, which can, you know, you have to be careful with washes when the paint is wet because everything can kind of start blending together, which you don't necessarily want, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and pick up some, let's actually grab some yellow, lemon yellow. So if you have lemon yellow or if you have a cadmium yellow, grab that. And we're gonna go ahead and start, I am gonna just start dropping color in. I'm gonna keep it pretty wet because I'm gonna be adding more yellows and even the brown is gonna seep into a little bit more of my um, petals a little bit. Now make sure too you have your yellow really rinsed out, rinsed out well. If you ever get green in the yellow it can throw off your color. So I had just rinsed my palette before I started recording because I was concerned about I had a little bit of green 
And this lemon yellow, it is almost a cold yellow, right? It, you can see how it is a very bright yellow, but it's fun to have as the base. And then I'm gonna pick up like cadmium. And if you're starting with cadmium, that may be just add a little bit of yellow over to it. And then I'm gonna start dipping that into some of those petals where it's gonna create a gold, really that bright yellow gold color that we're looking for. Because these Sunfinity flowers, they are just super bright, right? They are that really nice yellow, which the cadmium I find is not quite as bright, lemony yellow that I want, but the lemon yellow is too cold. So that's why I will oftentimes mix the yellows to get the blend and the temperature of the color that I want. And I'm gonna move over here. And if you only have one yellow, you can also add a little bit of brown to it. If you find that your green has kind of blended into some petals, don't worry about it. Not a big deal. That'll just kind of add to the, the character, the, just the little look of these particular flowers. I'm going to go ahead and just drop a little bit more yellow and then I'm going to go ahead and give this a break and I'm going to start on my, um, I'm going to do some in my center, I think. So I'm actually going to rinse off the brush really well and grab a brown. You might have a burnt sienna. You might have a raw umber. Either one's going to work really nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and just start dabbing and moving this around. Now you'll notice this is a raw sienna. It's not as dark as the dark umber, which is probably why I will go ahead and add a little bit of that in because this sunflower face is a pretty dark center, right? It's It has that warmth to it. Raw umber is a colder brown versus burnt sienna is a nice warm. I do love burnt sienna. It is so versatile. I can add so many colors to it. It looks so, so nice. So again, you'll notice I am not coloring it in. I am dabbing the paint in. I do want a little bit of white left in there. I want that watercolor to be free to dance and sing and do the magic that watercolor does. Plus, if I paint it all like a coloring page, it looks flat and we really don't want flat. I'm going to pick up a little bit of raw umber, get some water there, and I am just gonna dab a little bit of it in. Just a little bit over there. And I forgot to do this little guy. So I'm gonna do his little cute little face here. I'll do it opposite. I'll do that raw ember first. And then come back over, rinse my brush off, grab some burnt sienna. And if you find like it's splotchy, not a big deal. Just take your burnt sienna and just move it around and let that dry there. That looks, that looks good, I love that. Now what I suggest you do is I'm gonna take um, some yellow ochre with a small brush and I'm actually gonna take and start pulling. You can put some yellow ochre, some cadmium yellow, even mix them together. And I'm gonna start pulling just a little bit of that brown into the petals and it adds just a depth as well as it creates a sense of thickness because sunflowers, they have a lot of petals right? They're just kind of layer upon layer of petals. So we're not going to paint every single petal. There would be dozens and dozens, but we want to create that look of thickness, of um, depth as well. And if it blends out a little bit, that's not a problem at all. That's again, the beauty of watercolor is letting it sometimes just dance and merge and do what it wants to do. So I'm moving it up here moving this around. If you find like your paint's not moving, just get a little bit more water and then that'll that'll help liven up the dance floor for the paint color, so to speak. I'm picking up some more color here, just moving these around, adding a little bit of color at the ends of the petals too. That looks really nice. If you see anything that looks a little bit pale, just add in a little bit of color. If you wanna do some splattering up here, Oops, I guess I should probably put that down. Put that one down. Feel free to take that yellow and just splatter all around. That looks really, really good. Okay, now let's grab the green. Pick up your green, whatever green you're using. I'll just show you so you can see what a sap green looks like. I'll do one of these in a sap green. I'm gonna pull this down. The sap green is a warmer green. It's muted. It's definitely gonna be more on the fall color spectrum 
and you can see that it just um, it has a different feel of it and and actually it many sunflower leaves have more they're more they can be a little bit more muted sometimes so I think this is a really a nice color to use for sunflower stalks and if you feel like it's too muted it's like too sappy you can just add a little bit of a colder green so like a hooker's green to it and I can show you what that looks like I can take a bit of hooker's green and just dab that in just like that and then take a little bit more of the sap green get some water there and move that in too again being mindful where maybe my shadows are so this sunflower head's going to be covering up a lot of like these leaves right in here so i'm going to add some darker areas knowing that they're going to be more in shadow this guy's going to be a bit in shadow just dabbing this color up there and again leaving some white as well moving over here the yellow really moved down so i'm going to take my green move that over here just kind of move it around i kind of have a lot of paint on that so i'm going to add just some water i didn't even add more paint just picked up some water move it around the paint now i will pick up a little bit more paint here I'm going to get a little sap green over here and just set that down right at the top of each leaf and a little bit at the base and over here as well. And then I'm going to pick up some hooker's green and maybe just do a splash in the middle of each one. And then let's just see how that comes and turns out. I like these. These are looking really, really nice. Now you'll notice too, on this guy over here, I've written out the name of the flower. There's a little bit more white space. I could have put, I guess, another little sunflower. Um, and I might, what I might just do is if you feel like it's too much white, I'm just gonna do some more splattering over there. I'm making sure you get some yellow splatters down by the petals. I'm not really even sure how long we've been painting here. I don't think it's been 15 minutes yet, but you can see too, it's turning out really nicely. Now, if you notice like on these sunflowers, see this guy right here, wow, that brown really just danced. It did, it really just got really excited there. So even on this one up here, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm actually just gonna move a few little, move this color around. I'm actually not bothered by that at all. I can always come back in with some ink and clean that up, but I think I'm just gonna use my paintbrush on this top one and I'm gonna pick up a little bit more brown. And why am I doing that? Because I, I just wanna create that emphasis is right here, not in the petals. So we'll add in a little bit more right here and a little bit more around the end and make sure they don't, I don't encourage it to merge out as much. And then this guy here, I'm gonna take a dry brush. I'm actually going to soak up some of this excess paint. So if that happens to you where it's just the colors were dancing like wild, you know, you can just rein them back in a bit and say, come on guys, we're gonna wipe it on a paper towel. You And just kind of pull it back in. You can dab with your paper towels well, but then what I find with the dabbing, and I'll show you, is that dab lifts up so much of the paint and then you look almost like you have a watermark. And I see that and I didn't really want that. And that way, I, that's why I like taking a dry paintbrush because it just kind of um, corrals the paint and then picks up the excess without feeling like you just have a white mark there now. So then what I cause when you put the color back down on that white mark, it doesn't, it just doesn't typically, it's not quite the same. It doesn't settle in, it almost sets on top. And so that's kind of annoying, right? So that's why I do like the, the just a little bit using that um, paintbrush look. And what I will do is I'll let it dry and then I'll come back in, do a little bit more of ink and then bring it and, and then I'll, uh, put a little more paint and that, that'll that take care of that. And again, moving in some of my, my yellow here, if you think you need to extend some petals, this is a great time just to bring that yellow, move some of those petals out. I got some green in here. I'm not too worried about that. We're not, it's not like we're doing a portrait of someone's face, right? Where we want it to be an exact likeness. It's just a very fun, this is supposed to be fun, free, kind of let your paints flow, get to know them a little bit better and how the colors work together. You'll probably also decide that you really like this particular yellow, you don't care for that yellow. Maybe you wanna pull the gamboge back in and um, create with that color because it's just that more brighter 
uh, and more of a little, little bit of an orange tinge to it. So whatever you like to do. I hope you have enjoyed this. I am just kind of gonna keep play here for another minute or two. Um, but I think this is just, again, this is a fun project to play with. I love this size because I can do them fairly fast. And then I'll learn. I'll learn a lot about the different colors. And um, I just feel like I can do, I can do a lot. And I love sticking these in the mail. And that four by six size is perfect for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. If you have sunflowers growing in your yard, I would love to know which hybrid or which species that you're growing. I know again, this is a Sunfinity one that we have going on that we're painting today. And I'm going to see you guys next week. Oh, I'm also going to include the links to the other sunflowers that we've painted here on YouTube last year. Um, if you want to keep on playing with those sunflowers, you guys have a great week. And